This may not come across in the way I carry myself in this video because I do have, I know I have, a very monotone way of carrying my voice. It's just how I am. It's how I've always been. So it may not come through entirely clearly over the course of this video, but I am very excited to be talking about Ocular Max Ignis here. Spoilers, I guess, for anyone who wants to know my thoughts on this figure, but I freaking love this thing. I have zero interest in getting the full Ocular Max Defensor. I personally am not a fan of how it looks. I'm not interested in blades or streetwise, whatever they're called. Um, I used to have Medicus, their first aid. I might get him again, I don't know. But their Groove, whose name I don't remember, the third party name of, uh, their Groove actually looks kind of cool too. I don't know. But I've been dying for, not literally, but I've been figuratively dying for a standalone hotspot. Kind of like how I really wanted a standalone Motormaster, and I finally found that with Fansoy's Road King, who I still have. We'll be looking at him in robot mode, not VF mode, but we'll be looking at them both next to each other in robot mode. But uh, yeah, I've been wanting a standalone hotspot for a long time. And the Ocular Max take on this guy was just like, yes, that looks incredible. I want that. And this is so good. <laughs> Ignis here gave me, looked to give me what I wanted. Then I got this figure in hand, and oh, it's so good. <laughs> I love so much about what this figure does. Uh, so let's just get into it. This is a very hot spot alt mode. It's a light blue. I don't know how it's going to come across in the video because I've been having a difficult time dialing in the white balance on this guy. It's just, it's very, very difficult to dial it in. I think this is as close as I can get it for now, but it's like a very light kind of powder blue uh, vehicle mode with a lot of little details picked out here and there. Like especially, you get a little bit around the back where you get the tail lights done in like this orangey red. But you get the silver rims, you get the silver striping going along the side, which does get broken up here a little bit by this transformation tab as part of the combined mode, but meh, whatever. A little bit more up here, some black venting up here. You even get a little black venting like up here for the ladder. And then of course, lots of extra detailing all along this panel with like the white hose, the little silver for the end, the black straps, silver, 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 black, black, silver, white, red. It's so much. Uh, all of the windows are painted black. You've got the little fire tampograph, which is cute. Uh, around the front, you have lots of more of that silver and black gold for the headlights, orange and red for some of the other headlights. And it's just, a, it's a nice balance of colors. Uh, the silver and the translucent red for the uh, little flashers up top, I think are nice too. Like that's a nice dark translucent red. And because this is just an accent, I'm not worried about it breaking. Speaking of things breaking, uh, the side mirrors here are kind of a flexi plastic, so they're a bit, bit durable. You don't have to worry too much, I don't think, about them snapping. And they are actually, uh, there's, it's hard to tell, there's some like silver painted on the backside there. So yeah, there's a lot of nice paint on this guy. It's a really good color. It's also big and dense and hefty on the underside. We'll, we'll get more into this when we get to the robot mode, but I really like what they did with the coloration on this guy. And uh, even up top, you don't really get much in the way of visible robot. Like, if you know what you're looking for, you can see the legs, but that's kind of it. And this is just a really cool and rather large and hefty fire truck. As you can also see, I've got the accessories attached to them. Uh, I mostly kept these out because I wanted to show off the base mode when I do this video. And then after that, I'm going to put everything but the guns away. Uh, but, you know, this is what it comes with. Um, the one I got, I got the first run, so it came with a, uh, a second head for Defensor. We're not going to be looking at that because we're not going to be looking at the combined mode at all in this video because I didn't get this for the combined mode. I got this just for this. So we're only looking at this as a standalone figure, just to want to reiterate that. 
Uh, but it did come with a secondary uh, defense or head as well as some alternate faces for defense or but this is everything that you get that's specific to just the hotspot uh figure like just this at the robot mode and base mode but uh yeah these bits they just peg on they're these little square or these big chunky rather square rectangular tabs that go into these bits towards the back of the ladder and this is actually two pieces, because you've got this piece that can kind of go up and down. You can do it here, too, if you want to do that. Um, and then it can untab from here and go up and down like this, because it's just pegged in here. It can move up and around like this. And this just separates out, and this becomes like one of the hoses for the uh, base mode. And this would eventually uh, will eventually become a gun for the... Uh, robot mode and also partially for the base mode but we're just going to put this off to the side along with this let's untap this so we can look at the vehicle mode a little bit more properly on its own and again it looks really good and it even has a functioning ladder uh, it doesn't extend in the sense that it doesn't extend any more than this that's because of how it all collapses in robot mode but it does go up and down and it rotates. So you can actually get some good action out of the ladder. You can even slide it forward if you want. So you can kind of decide if you want to have it sitting like this or slid back. I prefer to have it slid back because I just think it makes the most sense further back like that. But you've got options. And then additionally, you have these little struts down here, which you can pull out to uh like they don't really do anything i don't even think they get in the way of the rolling like yeah they don't even stop the rolling really but uh <laughs> you can extend them to kind of further do the whole you know fire truck is stopped and has uh extended its ladder to help people who are trapped and whatever and i don't know i think it's a cute extra feature it is completely unnecessary I'm probably, or definitely never going to use it, but it's cool that it's there. And these can just push back in. And they click in and out pretty nicely. So there we have Ignis's fire truck mode. And as I said, this is a big, beefy guy. Like, this is, this is Ocular Max and Cursus, their onslaught, but as a fire truck in terms of, like, size, bulk, mass however you want to look at it. This thing is big. It is very big. But that kind of helps because uh, I would probably be a little disappointed if it was not quite as big and hefty and sturdy and still cost as much as this thing costs because this is not a cheap figure. Anyway, let's bring in another Ocular Max figure. Here we've got Ocular Max's... Uh, oh... I forget this guy's third-party name, but uh, G2 Brawl. It's specifically the G2 colors because, again, I wanted this guy as a standalone because I'm a weirdo who sometimes gets combiner figures just to be standalone figures rather than do the combine mode thing. But, like, I really like this figure, and I really like these colors. So, yeah, I still have this guy, and here he is with one of the larger Probus. That was his name. I remember because it sounded vaguely Im improper. But uh, yeah, that's how Ignis scales with uh, Ocular Max's version of Brawl. And for the most important comparison of all, here he is with the duct tank. All right, now before we detour into the uh, base mode, if you like this video or any other video that I've done and you would like to support the channel, I do have a coffee at a Patreon. Links to both at the end of the video as well as down in the description. Otherwise, the typical YouTube thing of like, comment, share, subscribe would definitely help. So with that, all that out of the way, let's turn this guy into his base mode, which is very simple. It's just like halfway to robot mode, basically. But uh, first, we're going to unplug the ladder from here and just kind of bring this up and keep that out of the way. It tabs in. Uh, there are these little tabs up here that tab in right down here. And then there are some things down here that kind of solidify as well. But it stays pretty well. I'm going to untab that, 
Now we want to untab these side flaps, and this will untab and untab and just kind of fold up, and this rotates in. And now this is something that's uh, it's a little bit tricky, but what we need to do, it's a little nuanced, and I kind of wish I didn't have to do this because this is just a combiner component. This doesn't need to be for like the regular robot mode. Basically, this little L-shaped piece here, you want to tilt that a little bit because this flap here disconnects. There's this little black piece here that's what's tabbed into the uh, upper body, so that disconnects, and this swings around, and you need to have that tilted so that this piece can angle through here. And then when you rotate it, it'll push this back down into place. And then this can rotate around, and you don't have to worry about flexing anything. Because that's the big concern with this. You don't want to flex stuff. So that goes up like that. And I can show you what I mean more here. If we untab this, untab this, it tabs in in a few places. There are these tabs that tab in here, but there are also these little hook tabs here that go in up here. But like if we try to bring this down, you'll see it clashes into this. And that is a problem. So if we just rotate that a bit, then that can go through. And then as you rotate it, it just rotates it down for you and everything's cool. And this can come up and just kind of sit like that. Now, I'm going to split the back of the vehicle, kind of split it apart. And the way that I find is easiest to get room to work back here is you want to rotate this joint while also bringing this joint out because this is the hip so you can click that out and rotate this and this actually works really well to give you a little more space to work with in here which is just very handy okay now I'm going to straighten out this joint here it's very stiff but just bring that back straighten it out completely and now I'm going to rotate this down and now we need to straighten this out and the way this works this is very important because when i was transforming this guy i was doing it without instructions and trying to go by feel and like this was not moving and i was wondering what i was doing wrong you do not want to try to move this just by like doing this there's actually a little piece right back here that's a locking tab right here you want to push this in and that will unlock the joint and that allows you to swing this up. And once that's in place, you can push that locking tab back down and that locks it in place that way. So do not try to force it and straighten that out the way I was trying to do it. Anyway, this can now come down to straighten out. And with this straightened out, we're going to just bring it out like this. And that is all we got to do for that. Uh, this leg is the same deal. You want to straighten this joint out, then bring this joint down, push in the locking tab, straighten this out, push the locking tab back in, and then bring down the leg and bring it up. And there is actually a, uh, it's hard to see, but there's like this little, there's this kind of chunky tab here that sits right in here. So that will perfectly keep this up and keep it from going out any further once this is all said and done. So there we've got the bottom half of the base mode. Now we want to take this panel, fold it down, and I believe this just kind of angles up like this and just kind of sits like a little platform. Then you want to take the front of the fire truck, split it down the middle, just down the middle. These other bits tab in a little too solidly, or, or these bits tab in a little too solidly, but this can come down and come down, and you want to rotate it forward like this. Then, we'll take the ladder section back here, and basically this kind of comes up, this pushes in, and this all will just kind of arrange itself 
like, you know, I don't think this actually tabs in. This just kind of sits. So you want to have the ladder going out over the front here. And that's it. That is the base mode, basically. Then you can take these pieces and these hoses will plug into. There are these little, uh, little circular little circular peg holes right here. These will plug in there on either side and you can like angle these in different ways. They're also, they can be rotated so you can angle them in other ways to make it look more like a repair bay. Uh, then these guns do attach here somehow. Trying to figure out how, because like I said, I have not actually attempted the, uh, the base mode. That's actually kind of clever. Okay, so the way this works is shockingly clever. These little struts have this kind of this little like lip on either side, and there's this little track on the underside of the rifle, because this is where the handle is right here. So on the underside here. And this just kind of looks like it just kind of slides over and it doesn't like click in place but like that's on there that's actually that's actually on there it's not coming off that's it, it's simple but like also really clever i actually really really appreciate that it's like yeah that that makes perfect sense um why aren't you going on here? Just work on the one side. Huh. Okay. I don't know what went wrong. I don't know why one side's working better than the other. But anyway, that's the base mode. It's fine. You can have a vehicle drive up and get repaired on... It's, it is what it is. I'm, I am not bothered by it. I appreciate the fact that it doesn't really have any special engineering, so it doesn't feel like any parts are wasted in service of this. But uh, yeah, this is not a mode that I'm going to use going forward. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Here is the base mode surfacing the duct tank. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to take all this junk off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this guy back into his fire truck mode so we can go just straight from fire truck mode to robot mode rather than having to be like, okay, now that we've done this, let's do this other stuff. So be right back. Okay. Now we have got fire truck again. So I'm going to go over it all again and I uh, want to go over some of the important stuff too, just in case anyone watching this skipped the transformation to the uh, to the base mode, because I could understand why. So first off, we're actually going to deal with the ladder this time around. So what we want to do is take the ladder, we want to pull it up and just kind of pull it up and angle it like this because when we pull it out like this because it, it's attached like this but when we pull it out like this now we can take this piece and push it through this opening here because we want to do that and with that pushed through now we can collapse the ladder in its entirety and collapses all the way in this piece flips down like that and now this will swing all the way around or not all the way around, it'll swing down like this. And then this piece, this little flap here, comes up and sits over this white piece that's kind of tucked in like that. So there is that. This slides down to compact in further. And this also rotates, this whole thing rotates down, and like compacts down, and we will deal with that later. Now for these side panels, we want to untab them from here. They tab in. Here, 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 here. There's little hook tabs that tab in here. And these little tabs here that go in here. And then this will disconnect this little black piece up here. Right here is what's tabbed in. So when we move that, that opens it up. 
but we want to be very careful of this. I mentioned this in the other transformation bit, but like this tab here, if you go to move this flap like this, it's going to hit this and you can kind of force it, but like you don't want to be flexing this plastic around. So what you actually need to do is you need to take this L-shaped tab and it actually rotates. So you want to rotate it a bit and that gives you the clearance to get this through. And then as you straighten this out, it'll rotate that back into place. And that gets this whole flap section past all that without having to do any flexing which is better. You do not want to be flexing all of this stuff, believe me. <laughs> uh, this piece is only necessary for the combine mode. So I kind of wish that uh, it wasn't there, but whatever, because I don't plan on using this for a combination, but it is what it is. Anyway, I want to rotate this a little bit. That rotate it around, and then that can settle back in. And that just sits like that. Now, for the legs, we're going to split the back here and just kind of want to bring what are the hips out a little bit and rotate the thigh a little bit because it's a really good way of giving yourself some more room to work. Now, straighten out this joint here, which is very solid, and it might be easier to just bring this out to show you what I mean. This is very solid, so you want to bring that up all the way. And since we've got that out all the way, now we can rotate the hip section down. And now you can see how this is sticking out further than when it's compacted like that. Now I want to bend this joint down, and then this joint has to straighten out here. But this is locked in place. Do not try and force it. There's actually a little tab here. You push this, and that unlocks the joint. Then you can swing it up and then push that back into place to lock that joint back into place. So that is how you want to do that. And that is one leg done, minus the foot. We'll do the foot after we get the other leg. So this comes up, and we can bring the hip down. Bring that down. Unclip this, swing it up, clip it back in. And there we go. Two legs. Now for the feet, we want to push this flap up hold this part of the flap in, and then the foot comes down, and you want to, basically, uh, you're taking this, this joint here and you're straightening this out. Then you want to get this piece here, this little blue piece here, up. And the easiest way to do that is to move this joint, not this one that we just moved, but this upper joint. Move that down and into place. Then back forward like that, and the friction will pull that down. And with that done, this panel can come back down, this can come back in, and there you have a foot. And here, same thing, bring that up, fold that in, bring this down, fold this out, bring this panel up, and then back down to get that piece in place, bring down the door, bring that up, and there we've got two legs, all done. Hotspot is coming together. And now we've got all the rest of this happening. So we're going to split the front of the vehicle mode. And I'm going to use a spudger here just because this front section tabs in very securely. And uh, these bits also, as you can see, separate. But like these don't plug in anywhere near as solidly as the center here. And I just didn't feel like wrestling with that. So, separate that out, bring these bits down, Oops. one of the tires got pushed out of place, and bring this down some more, and we're just going to rotate these forward for now. We're going to want them out of the way for getting the backpack situated, but before we get the backpack situated, we need to take care of the head. So to do that, we're going to hold this piece down. And it kind of stops here, but then there's a secondary rotation right up here. So we can rotate this panel out like that, just to kind of get it out of the way. And now this section here rotates back. This panel can rotate around. And then we want to take the combined mode head, just the head, not the entire upper body, and rotate it around 180 degrees. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, you can't store the head in the torso going this way. It just doesn't fit quite right. 
so you need to rotate it around, which kind of sucks, but whatever. So you rotate this around, open up the combined mode head, and there's Hotspot's head. You want to rotate this down and inside the torso, close the combined mode head back up, rotate everything back around 180 degrees, bring this back up, and then rotate all of this back around again, and now we have Hotspot's head sitting there. Now we can do the backpack. So for the backpack, I want to bring this in, and this will tab in to these two tabs here, and then these tabs will go in up here, and this tab here will go into this slot right here. So it's a lot of stuff tabbing in, but it will tab in. I want to compress it, and it all locks in. Then you want to take these side flaps and basically these tabs here, these tabs will go in here. And it's a little tricky to line up. This does take a little bit of flexing, but it's not something that I think is really an inherent danger to the figure. But uh, I guess I'll let you know if that changes, but that will kind of plug in. There we go. And that gives you a very nice tidy backpack. I'll talk more about that later, but I love how the ladder section compresses so completely into the back. Okay. Now, uh, normally I save the head for last, but we'll just take care of that now. So for the head, you actually have to pull out his little antenna, and this is kind of awkward to do, but the way you can do it easier is if you have this panel kind of down and out of the way, you rotate the head to the side and tilt it up. That way you can get a finger on top here and another finger, like a thumb, underneath here, because there is a little lip here. You can just pull, and that will pull the antenna right out. And it kind of, like, it can get pushed back in, but not, like, if you tap it, it's not going back in. You have to push it in. So if you pull this out, it does kind of lock into place, so you don't have to worry too much about it going back in accidentally. And same deal here might do it the other way just because you can't tilt the head quite as far when the other antenna is out, but there we go. And now the torso does some really cool stuff too. That chest panel that is obviously a chest panel, uh, what you do here is first of all, get these arms out of the way. You want to take this piece in the center here and this actually slides apart, which is a little tricky to get started, but you slide this out slide this out and that allows you to rotate this now all the way around like this so that it becomes chest plate but it still doesn't fit quite right because what you actually have to do is there are these bits here these little like darker blue sections that is painted darker blue you actually push those down and pushing those down will push the front of the chest plate forward and with the front of the chest plate pushed forward, now this can go up all the way. It'll clear those tires, and these bits here will kind of tab in to these sections, these little grooves on the other side of the chest plate. And that brings the chest together. And that is really clever. I like that the chest plate actually transforms a little bit. It's really simple. But I like how that works because it gives you even more to do with the transformation. Now we can finish things up with those arms, and the arms are involved. <laughs> so you want to unpeg this whole side panel here, and this kind of comes up. Then this whole side section, like the front and some of the underside here, will come untabbed, and it kind of untabs and pulls down a bit, and then rotates out. And it's a little tricky to do, but it does go. Then once that's done, you take this panel and push that up. This panel goes in, and you can just kind of make sure they're kind of flush like that. Then this can pull out, and rotate around 180 degrees. This piece here slides down. It actually unclicks and slides down and clicks back into place. This panel here untabs, and it actually, uh, we rotate this so you can see what's happening here. This panel rotates 180 degrees and then 
pegs back into the other side. Then untab this section, flip out the fist, tab it back in, rotate the fist into place, extend all the fingers, which we will talk about more with articulation. And uh, there is one arm. Now all we have to do is bring this back in and that just kind of settles in there and then this panel can come back in. Uh, before we do that, this is one thing I like to do. This little gray piece here that's part of the uh, front bumper, it actually can rotate out. I don't know if that's necessary for the sake of the robot mode transformation. I just like doing it because you know, it gives you a little bit more to do. So rotate that out and then this comes down and there are these little, little pegs and peg holes right here that that'll line up with uh, this should peg yeah this little peg here pegs in here and this big chunky peg here pegs in here so this all comes in and should kind of there we go kind of locks into place and there is an arm despite what you might think this guy's arms his biceps are much better than in curses <laughs> but we will get to that that's one arm. Uh, the other arm, I'm going to try to show it from the uh, from this angle so you can actually see what's happening. So I'm going to, again, untab this, bring that up. Then this piece kind of unplugs from here. And then also it kind of pulls back a little bit to give you clearance to swing up. And once that's swung up, this can fold in, this can fold in. This piece on uh, disconnects here, and you want to do this first. Don't rotate it. Pull it out first, because there is a little tab here that goes in there. So pull that out first. Then we can slide this down, rotate this around, and then again, it's easier to flex this to get it to move, but untab this, rotate it 180 degrees, and then tab it back in, and uh, I'll bring it down from this side so this comes down and kind of goes back in place. This comes back and tabs in, kind of locks everything together, and there we go. And finally, to cap everything off, just pull this panel out, fold out the fist, and there we go. That is it. Incursus's transform or er, Incursus Ignis's transformation is actually pretty darn. Oh, forgot to flip that out. So yeah, Ignis's transformation is pretty darn direct and simple for what it is, but very effective, and you are left with one heck of a cool looking hotspot like this guy is enormous and very cool and i i love this robot mode like it's so clean too i love how that backpack compacts it's very clever and you don't really get any real kibble really i mean yes you've got the entire front halves of the uh fire truck mode as his shoulders but like that's part of the design like i think this is at least partially homaging the g1 toy and the g1 toy his arms were just this with fists sticking out so i feel like that is understandable and gets a, absolutely gets passed so enamored with this backpack that is so clever the legs are you know just kind of the back ends of the truck but they get the job done uh, there are, if you're worried about the knee uh, stability, which you don't have to worry about it, they are very clicky. You can actually, this is part of the combined mode transformation, but there's this panel here that flips in, and it's actually designed to sit inside this little lip, the back of the leg here. So you can flip this in, and that will lock the knee. So that knee is not going to be able to move. I thought at first this was part of the transformation, and so I did that, and then when I was messing around with articulation, I was like, wait, he doesn't have knees. What's going on? It's like, that's because of these. These lock the knees in place, which not necessary in robot mode at all. 
not actually part of the robot mode transformation, but if you want to make sure he is incredibly stable in robot mode, that's how you can lock the knees. But I prefer to leave him out because then he can articulate. And uh, yeah, this is just such a cool design. I love this design. And I particularly love the way they did the colors here because you've got this kind of powder blue that was used for the bulk of the robot, as well as the black. And then that splash of red for the chest looks fantastic. But I also really love how in a few areas, like the knees and the shoulders, you get a slightly darker powdery blue. It's very, it's very subtle, but I, I actually love this detail Like right here. It goes from the light blue to the slightly darker blue and up in the shoulder, you got the light blue and the slightly darker blue. I just love that kind of simple, but really elegant looking contrast in the colors. And again, like the red for the chest really pops with nice little silver detailing in there as well. And even from this distance, you can see just how much that head works where you've got the light blue but then a much darker blue compared to everything else uh, for the actual face and faceplate and like the red eyes it's just it's really nice i like how like i like color schemes that go all over the place but there's something about having basically one color that you use in different shades that really appeals to me Yes, this guy has red and black and silver in here as well, but I really like how you've got this primarily light blue color with a slightly darker blue for accents and a even slightly darker blue for the face. It just works so well. This is a fantastic looking robot. And again, like even going around the sides, he's so clean, especially that backpack. I just cannot get enough of that backpack. Also, there is a little bit more of that slightly darker blue in the uh, sides of the forearms there, which is very cool. And yeah, this is just a very, very neat design. I love the transformation on this. There's a lot of engineering on this guy that I'm not touching because it's for the combined mode, but I just really like how this all works. And again, he is big and beefy, but we will look at that more in a minute, because first we got to Take a look at the head, and the head is spectacular. I love the sculpt on this thing. It's very crisp. I like how the bits sliding out, like they don't go in super easily. Like you can, obviously, if you grab the head like this and pinch, you're going to push them in, but you just have to grab the head like this to turn it, and you don't have to worry about it. But like I like how that just beefs out the silhouette of the head a little bit. And the sculpt is really nice. I like how this head crest that goes back actually kind of becomes almost like a little hood ornament style fin towards the back and the sculpting goes all the way around it's the painting on the head is very simple it's just the light blue for the helmet the darker blue for the face and then red for the eyes but it works incredibly well like i said that darker blue with the lighter blue is so good and the red pops really nicely with all of that even if it's a darker red so the sculpt is great the painting is great i really like the layered looking uh the layered look they have here too with like kind of between the texture of like the face and the face plate it's hard to tell if that's like a t uh, like a two-layered face plate or like if his face is the same color as his face plate or if that I means robots so that may just be his face but i don't know it's a nice look it's a cool sculpt it adds a little bit of extra almost like i guess dynamicness to the sculpt of the head even though it's relatively simple it does a lot with a little i just really i really like that now, for articulation, this guy is not lacking for articulation at all. As you saw, the head is on a ball joint, and it does actually get a really decent amount of tilt, even with those ears extended. Can look up that far, can look down that far, which is good, because he's big. <laughs> we will see that in a minute. Uh, rotates all the way around. The arms can rotate all the way around, and they can go out on ratchets to here and then you can also use more of that transformation joint here but here it is pressing against the tire so that is something to keep in mind so if you move the arms in and out you probably want to stick to the inner joint because it's sculpted to actually get around the tire without any problem 
Uh, the elbows, you get double jointed elbows where it can bend up here and it can bend up here. So it can go to almost 180, which is a really nice bend. Um, it's actually the tab there is what's getting in the way. So if that tab wasn't there, you could go all the way up, which is wild. Um, so you get that. You get a forearm swivel, wrist swivel. The wrist can also go up and down. It's, uh, it's a little bit loose and it's not loose, but like it's it, when he's holding the guns, they tend to do that, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's a pin, so you can't really tighten it with like a, you know, using a screwdriver, but it's fixable. But anyway, wrist swivel. The hands are as you'd expect for a large Ocular Max slash Mastermind Creations toy. Very nicely articulated. You got a ball joint at the base of the thumb, so it can rotate and swing and kind of wiggle a little bit. It's kind of all you need. And then all of the fingers are individually articulated. They're not, they're not, uh, it's very subtle that they kind of come out a little bit to look a little bit more natural, so they're not all exactly the same length, but they're close to exactly the same length. But they do have three hinges, uh, one at the base, one there, and one there. So you can curl the fingers in quite a bit and get pretty expressive with them. You don't get any in and out motion like you do with uh, some other Ocular Max or Mastermind Creation figures, but it's, fu it's fine. Now, in Cursus's big weakness was the bicep swivels. I did not like the bicep rotation restriction on that figure. This guy, he kind of has that problem, but he also doesn't. If the arm is straight, you can actually rotate the bicep pretty well, just like that, with no problem. If you bend the elbow, now you're not going to be able to rotate it this way because the elbow is banging into that, which stinks. But you actually have a lot of options with this guy, because what you can do... Okay, <laughs> I was just looking at that line there, wondering if it was dirt, but it's just silver paint. What you can do is this is on a slider so you can click this out and slide it down and basically you can slide it all the way down so that it clicks and close this back up and now you've got way more bicep rotation space here the problem is now it looks a little bit weird because you've got this big chunk kind of sitting off center but you can do that. Another thing you can do is you can just unclick it from the uh, from this point up here. So you can unclick it without actually clicking it into its other position. And that just gives you enough space so that you can kind of rotate the arm more and you can slide this in as needed to get more rotation and then slide it back to kind of close that up a little bit. So that gives you some more wiggle room or <laughs> you could slide this all the way down and then move this panel back around to its original position from the uh, from the truck mode and close all this back up again. And now the bicep sits a little bit closer to the main body, but that panel doesn't actually get in the way of the rotation at all. So you can get complete free bicep rotation just by configuring the arm this way. It does make the arm sit a little bit closer to the center, which looks a little bit weird, and it does leave a gap up here, but like, you get completely unrestricted bicep rotation when you do that. So it's, it's entirely your call how you want to do these things. For now, I'm going to leave it to, at the uh, default position. So I'm just going to rotate this back around and all that. But like, I love that the Incursus um, purse, <laughs> I guess, isn't a thing anymore. So the biceps on this guy are completely unrestricted. That is fantastic. Now I'll get the arms out of the way to show off the rest of the wonderful articulation this guy has. You have a waist swivel that goes all the way around. You also get a ratcheted uh ab crunch that goes down quite a bit 
Um, it does block the waist rotation if you go down all the way, just because it's like whacking into stuff. But if you go up one click, you can go around all the way while ab crunched quite a bit. Uh, these bits, they separate for the transformation to torso mode, but they are actually separate hip skirts that can move forward. And when they move forward, you can then rotate the legs forward to just about 90. They can go back to just about 90. They can actually go to 90 if the, you know, if you are able to kind of circumvent the backpack there. They can go out, as we saw in the base mode, to 90. They stop here because of that tab that kind of goes into this notch here, but I think that's fine. Uh, also, I guess if you really wanted to and you didn't want to like mess with the hip skirts, you could use this transformation joint to move the leg forward, and it could go forward to, uh, eh, to 90. So you could use that if you want. I don't like using it, but you could. You get a thigh rotation. You also get, we bring this forward a bit, you get a single jointed knee that bends to pretty much 90. And that is as far back as that knee can go, because like there's too much other stuff in the way for it to go back any further. <laughs> and all these other joints bend the other way. But still, that's pretty good. And then for the feet, uh, you get ankle tilt, but they are just a panel, so it doesn't look the best, but it it does the thing. It, <laughs> it works as a foot. And you can also use the joints here to kind of point the toe a little bit if you want, or angle the toe up if you want. Personally, I just treat them as like ankle tilts and leave it at that, but it's stuff you can do. So yeah, he is very nicely poseable. He looks very cool, and I'm going to put him in the pose that I tend to keep him in. I think I did I accidentally unplug. No, I didn't. Okay, thought I accidentally untapped the uh, the thing. But yeah, this guy is big and imposing and cool, and I love him. Now for the accessories. You have the hoses that, as far as I can tell, they only really work in one spot. Uh, if you want, you can unplug these. I don't know why, but you can. Also, not blast effect compatible. Can't use blast effects on the hose. At least not these. I don't know if the I don't think the peg ones work, but I don't have any of the peg ones handy. Well, maybe they would. They kind of look the same size. I don't have any peg on blast effects handy to show though. So my apologies there. But anyway, uh, the only place I've found to attach these in robot mode is the same place they go in the base, where you just plug them in here, and they can kind of work as like extra hose shoulder things. I don't know. I'm not too fond of that, but it's a thing that you can do with them, for better or for worse. So yeah, that's kind of how I was using them before. But uh, I don't really like those, so I'm not going to use them again after this. <laughs> and for the guns, there are these little handles here that can pull out. And basically, you've got the big handle for defense orb. What you want to do is grab these little tabs here to hold that in place and push the bigger handle back in. And that gives you the smaller handle for Ignis. And for that, it uh, does kind of what you'd expect. Where there is, get this oriented properly here, there's a this channel in the palm right here. This kind of squarish thing. Rectangular thing, rather. And the tab just lines up and slots in. And that holds it, and then you just uh, can kind of situate the fingers around it. And now he's holding the gun. Very simple. And other hand, same deal. And it doesn't matter which gun you use, the uh, either gun uses the exact same uh, thing. Like, the, the tabs go on either side of the handle, so 
There's no left gun, right gun. But that can go in there. Curl fingers round. And there he goes. Now he is all armed up and looking really cool. And I just I freaking love this figure because he is so neat, so big and beefy and chunky. Yeah, to round this all out with some size comparisons, like seriously, this guy is huge, comparatively. <laughs> Maybe bring in our regular size comparisons, and he he is immense compared to these. He's like twice the height of a tall Voyager, and probably like five to six times the weight. <laughs> Maybe more, I don't know. Uh, so there is that. We'll bring in... G2 Brawl, or Probus. Probus Regenesis, I believe is what they uh, called this guy. And there are the two of them, and this is basically... Like, I don't, I no longer have Incursus to do a direct comparison here. So, my apologies for anyone who wanted to see that, but he is basically Incursus size. And Incursus was also massive, but I feel like this guy, Ignis, wears the bulk even better. Like, proportionally, this guy just looks better to me than in Cursus. He doesn't have, like, the weird potato torso. Brawl still looks great, though. <laughs> I freaking love that Brawl. And uh, because I invoked his name earlier, and I told you I was going to bring him in, here we have Fans Toys Road King. And uh, it's worth pointing out, I have Road King's heels oriented in a way so that he's actually kind of up on his heels a bit. So he's slightly taller right now, standing slightly taller than he would if he were flat-footed. And even then, Incursus is a little bit taller. So, uh, yeah, he's big. But here we go. So here, we have, this makes me happy, having my definitive Motormaster and my definitive hot spot this is this is great and it's also kind of funny to me how my definitive versions of these combiner characters are both torsos <laughs> this is kind of how it worked out and finally and most importantly here is incursus with i keep saying incursus here's ignis with the duck tank and that does it for ocular max ignis i said it right this time uh I, I, this figure is amazing. I'm going to get rid of these hoses, though, because I've finished the video and I no longer need to hang on to them. So these are going to go back in the box. Also, I forgot to check, but nope. The guns are not Blast Effect compatible. The ports are too big. But anyway, yeah, Ignis is incredible. I... I was look like I said, I was looking forward to this guy a lot because I really wanted a cool hotspot and just hotspot. And for a while I thought that was going to be the generation toy version, but then Mastermind Creations slash Ocular Max revealed theirs, and I was like, that's the one. And yeah, this does not disappoint. If anything, it exceeded my expectations because I knew this guy was gonna be big and chunky, but like he is big and chunky. And I was also kind of thinking, like, you know, he's like looking at the looking at the pictures. It made it seem like, okay, this guy is going to have a similar problem to Incursus. I don't know why they can never get bicep swivels right on these torso bots, but I'll live with it. But then I got him, and it's like, oh, it's actually not a problem at all. You can work around it, and you've got a lot of options that actually completely free up the bicep swivel without even having to do anything fancy to the shoulders. So, like, it's it's great. The, uh, the only gripes I have with this figure are, like, this forearm is a little bit loose, so, like, it unclicks more easy than I'd like, and when I try to rotate the bicep on this arm, I tend to rotate the forearm rather than the bicep. So that's a little bit annoying, but, like, that's kind of all I can really do. Like, that's kind of all I can really complain about. Everything else on this guy has been really nice and solid. He's well-balanced. He doesn't have heels, but he kind of doesn't need them because his feet are, like, his legs are just these big blocks. Like, they don't... 
they don't need to go back any further because his legs are just these big refrigerator boxes basically and his backpack compacts so much that like it doesn't really stick out enough to throw off his balance really the only risk to this guy is the way his uh, feet are designed it is possible for him to tip forward but like he's balanced well enough that even when his toes are up like that he's you know he's pretty well balanced and once his feet, like once his toes are actually down, you don't have to worry about him falling either. So, yeah, his, despite appearances with those feet, he is really pretty sturdy. <laughs> and again, he just looks amazing. He's fun to mess with. The transformation has a couple of little nuances to it, but like it, it comes together really well. Also, I completely forgot to point out how they painted a lot of detail on the inside of the leg. I like the black, the darker blue, the kind of gunmetal y silver in there. It's just so much of this figure has been really nicely painted. And he looks, it just looks really good. This is, to say it one more time, this is what I wanted. This is the hot spot that I wanted. And I am so happy to have him. And I love that I finally got to make a video on him. <laughs> The only aesthetic gripe I have that I didn't mention in the video is that his thighs look a little messy. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, this for me is like the definitive hotspot. This is the only hotspot I need. I would probably get more if more cool ones came out, but like, this is just so good. This is a fantastic figure that I am ecstatic to finally have. And yeah, anyone who's looking at this guy and kind of thinking about it, 100% worth it. Even if you're not doing the combined mode, which I'm not, I think this is still worth it. Uh, you know, obviously I would prefer to have him cost a little bit less and not have all the combined mode bits since I don't care about the combined mode, but I feel like you can't really do a third party masterpiece-ish style hotspot and not do the combining thing. People would not take kindly to that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, this is just very cool. Anyway, I've talked in circles long enough, so that is everything I've got to say about Ocular Max Ignis. What do you all think of this guy, or this team? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And next time, I don't know. No idea. We'll see. It's not going to be a big, expensive third-party figure, though, I can tell you that, because I've pretty much covered all the ones I have right now. But it'll be something. I guarantee you that.